Well, hello everyone. This is going to be a, a barnstormer. Um, we're going to do something quite uh, different than what I had uh, prepared for. So I'm going to be uh, flying not by the seat of my pants. I know what I'm talking about, but um, I hadn't planned on doing this. So I have no notes or anything. We're going to see how the Lord leads here. Uh, we were going to continue our series in Genesis. I hope to, of course, get back to that uh, next week. Uh, but we are going to take a one-week hiatus. And we're going to take a look at something uh, totally different. Um, something has happened to me, um, which really shook me up in a good way. And yet, uh, the news wasn't so great. Um, I'm going to read, let me read the scripture first, and then, um, then I'll explain what we're going to talk about here today. It's really what's happening in our country today, and how, um, how that ties in biblically, of course. Um, <clears throat> our, our bottom line is always the scripture. And, uh, and what Jesus is telling us, okay? Now, some of you may very, very much, uh, you're either gonna very much agree with me, or you're gonna say, what? So let's see, we'll see where you stand. Okay, so 1 Timothy chapter two, beginning with verse one and reading to verse seven. <clears throat> Here's what it, what Peter, what Paul, excuse me, records for us. I urge them, first of all, that petitions, prayers, intercessions, and thanksgiving be made for all people, friends, enemies, for somebody they don't even know. Prayer for all people, for kings, and those in authority, that we may live peaceful and quiet lives in all godliness and holiness. This is good and pleases God, our Savior, who wants all people to be saved. That's the bottom line, worshiping God and being a witness for him and helping people to find the one way of salvation through Jesus Christ, who wants all people to be saved and to come to a knowledge of the truth. For there is one God, not many, not many religions, there's only one way into the kingdom. For there is one God, one mediator between God and mankind, the man Christ Jesus who gave himself as a ransom for all people, this has now been witnessed to at the proper time. And for this purpose, I was appointed a herald and an apostle. I'm telling the truth, I'm not lying, and a true and faithful teacher of the Gentiles. So let's pray. Now may the words of my mouth and meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. And Lord, again, we, we pray for um, the situation in Afghanistan, that the Americans and friends would get out uh, unscathed. Um, we pray for those brave souls that are, that are trying to maintain their independence in Afghanistan. Uh, we pray for wisdom to know uh, how to even pray about the situation. And Lord, there's been a lot of decisions, a lot of things that have occurred, especially these last several months. And many people have been saying, at least to me, what is going on? We don't understand this. I wanna thank you, Lord, for giving me a, um, a clear mind and an understanding of what's happening here. Um, Lord, may each person listening have an open mind. Some are not going to be happy with me. 
Some are going to be very happy with what I say. Well, to a point. Um, but being one who proclaims the, the, the good news and the, the truth doesn't make you very popular sometimes. So help us, God. Help us to just listen and for the truth and weigh it out and see what you're saying to us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I'm doing this particular one, not on a Monday morning, but Sunday afternoon. I just had this burning desire to, to do it now. I woke up this morning. It is an absolutely gorgeous day. I felt pretty good. My back is doing better. I, for those of you that don't know, I hurt my back again. And usually when that happens, I'm knocked down for 10 days. But I felt pretty good. And um, my mind was kind of in neutral, just kind of praising the Lord in my spirit. And all of a sudden, a thought came to me. This thought gave me a very clear picture of all the things that have been going on recently, things that many people just haven't been able to understand. I'm sure there's many that do get it. Um, and that something happened to me, not only this morning, but back in um, 1976, when I was a young man, see, that would be what, 45 years ago? Um, and I will tell you about this encounter in just a moment. Um, what happened on 19, 1976 was a warning and a prophecy that now I find coming true. What was laughable and ridiculous in 1976 is no longer ridiculous. Uh, the great uh, intellectual uh, Christian thinker, Francis Schaeffer from Labrie in Switzerland, said that which was once the unthinkable is now not just the unthinkable, but has become the thinkable and the doable. And he was referring to abortion, uh, how that has, was accepted. Um, but there's many other things that we thought would be absolutely ridiculous, things that we could think that would never happen in this country are happening now. We need to pay attention. So you can blow me off if you want, but I hope you'll listen. Give yourself the courtesy of listening to someone who has made the connections. It's not because I'm so smart, I'm not. I just serve a great God and a smart God. And he said to me this morning, you remember that prophecy? And it has stuck in my mind all these years. I remember that message. I have listened to thousands of messages and read untold number of uh, messages or sermons. I've read books and I've done all these things over the years. And most, many of them made an impression on me and helped me to form my theology. Um, this has been hammered out over the course of over 48 years of Bible study. Uh, but there's few that I really could tell you what the man or the woman said uh, specifically. In this case, I do remember at least the basic main point. And that is he warned us, the speaker, his name was Harlem Popov from Bulgaria. He warned us, and I took it to heart, that someday we were going to lose our freedoms in this country because communism and Marxism would take it over unless we were started to pay attention, and we have not. Largely, we have not. And we are now at a situation where if it keeps going and the momentum is going in the wrong direction, if we don't really pray about this and take actions, we're gonna lose more and more of our freedom. And this wonderful American life that we're living is not gonna be what it's been. Okay, I'm hoping that you're gonna stay with me. Um, the man's name was Harlem Popov. He was a Bulgarian pastor in a large church there, uh, right after World War II. And uh, he loved Jesus. He had a wife and two small children. 
he preached the gospel night and day. And he could see something very, very evil that was coming upon his land. In the land of Bulgaria, the communists had taken all the preliminary steps, many of which have been done and are being done here. And they had taken over the country and they were solidifying their hold uh, and their power position in that country to the point no one could stop them any longer. One night, and he knew it was coming. He prayed and prayed and then he went about his business as an evangelist and a pastor. And one night in 1948, um, I've read his book three times and I met the man. Um, the communists came in, to, broke into his house, slapped him around in front of his wife and children and took him away in chains. For the next 13 years and two months, I'm not gonna go into what they did. You might wanna read his book, Tortured for His Faith, Harlem Popov. They tortured this man mercilessly. They were trying to break him. They were trying to get him to admit as a Christian pastor and leader that he was a subversive, which he was not. All he did is love people and, and preach the gospel. But they tried to break him and they could not because of the Holy Spirit empowering this man beyond what a human being can normally um, take uh, in terms of the, the mind games and especially the physical absolute torture they put this soul through. They starved them, they did all kinds of things. That's just hardly scratching the surface. <laughs> I don't wanna get into the details, but it was horrible what they did to this poor soul. And yet he never gave up on the Lord. They broke his health because he was a young man when this happened. They took away his family. They took away every penny he had. He had nothing but, but the, the clothes on his back. Um, enough of that. Finally, he found a way in which to get released. And he came to the United States of America, very well broken all the way around. God, little by little, restored him. He was a little guy. I remember he, I don't think he was any more than five, three, five, four. He was a little man. And these brutes just brutalized him. So I was, um, I had become a Christian in 1973, three years before, I was called to be a pastoral minister, a minister of the gospel, and was uh, attending a wonderful evangelical school in Kentucky. Uh, what a wonderful experience that was. And I, I still can't remember, but I got this amazing job as a youth director on the weekends. And um, I would spend half the week in school in my classes, uh, Tuesday morning through Friday afternoon. The rest of the week, I was down in this 1100 member church in the middle of nowhere um, in a county seat, though, in uh, the southern part of Kentucky, a little place called Somerset. And um, I was coming down to my place, and I passed through town. And there on the billboard uh, before the school, the public school, was a notice that said, tonight, Harlem Popoff. I went, what? What in the world is Harlem Popoff from Bulgaria? And I've read his book, at that point it was twice. Um, what is he doing here? In the middle of nowhere. Well, that's, you say, oh, what a coincidence. No, no coincidence. That's a God incident. God brought that man there, if for no other reason, certainly to speak to me, because there were not many people there. I don't remember, maybe 25, 30 people. So I went, and I was all ears, because I knew his story. And he retold it. The man's face was all sunken in. I mean, it was, uh, it was just, you could tell this man had been through hell. And at the end, he said, you, you Americans, you're asleep. And the communists have already come into this country. And now I'm finding out that was true. 
and they are little by little going to dismantle your democracy and your freedom and they're going to take it away unless you wake up i took that to heart now you say okay that's a nice that's well it's not a nice it's a horrible story and why why are you telling all of this because i have never forgotten that message and every once in a while god reminds me and now i am seeing what he said coming to fruition it took 45 years but we are on the brink of losing more and more of our freedoms and the bill of rights for example um what does that have to do with the scripture you say well it talks here about interceding for all people Inter and the intercessor stands in the gap um here's here's god here's people and you stand in the gap between the two and you pray on behalf of the people to the lord for some kind of help all right an understanding that's important to do and it says that we should intercede or we should pray for kings and those in authority well who are those those are people who are in government people who make decisions for us a small number of people um, make decisions that affect our everyday lives so we need to pray for them why that we may live peaceful and quiet lives in all godliness and holiness if you have a government like we have had um, that is set up in such a way where we have freedom we can come and go as we need to or want to we can go to church if we want to there are many countries you cannot do that uh, we just take that for granted maybe sometimes um if you have a government that at least is not a totalitarian state and you have freedom you have the freedom of worship and many other freedoms and um it it's great it's wonderful we have just we just take it for granted my whole life i've taken this maybe in a sense for granted i'm 72 years old and I remember how it was and how it, up until recently it was. And then all of a sudden I see this eroding. Um, we need to pray and really pray and take steps like voting. <laughs> There's other things and I can't get into that today um, that we're going to need to do. We're going to have to push back at what is happening in our society. Um, we're not going to have the freedoms, if a totalitarian situation develops, believe it or not, even in America. That's why I was reading this passage. The Lord gave it to me and reminded me. We want to continue to have a governmental system that allows us to have freedom. Not told we can't come to church because of a pandemic. And, all right, we went through the heart of it. We don't need to be doing that anymore. And that's a whole controversial thing in itself. But there's much bigger things. There's a power grab that's going on. There are people who are in power. We've put them there. And now we are in serious trouble. So people say, I don't get it. I'm a military man. I, in fact, I had military training as well. Not a lot. But I was training to be a military chaplain, army chaplain, U.S. Army. Um, so I got some training. And it's obvious that when there's a problem, you get your people, your citizens out first, and then your military. And you take your weapons with you or you destroy them, none of which was done in the right order. We th then people are saying, oh, what a blunder. I don't think that was a blunder. I think that was done purposely. You say, oh, gee, that's an awful judgmental thing. Okay. So Mr. Trump, I'm trying not to be political here, but he told the Taliban, if you, if you even boo, we're going to jump on you. No American soldier was killed in 18 months because they knew when Mr. Trump said something, he meant it. And you don't mess with America. Well, the Taliban, we start getting reports in April have taken over 10% of the country. And I'm saying, well, why aren't we addressing this? Because when the Taliban takes over, 
they they do horrible things. Heads heads roll. Women are nine, ten year old girls are are being married to these soldiers, and on and on it goes. It's a horrible. It's a Islamic system. Most Islamic people are peaceful, nine tenths. But there's a billion. You do the math. That's a hundred million of them that aren't so nice. <laughs> And they do some horrible things. They are ultra conservative. You, have, you get ultra liberal, that's not good. Ultra conservative is not that good either. You can go too far in either direction. What we really need to be is God centric and who cares the labels, right? We need to be Christ centric and God centric. Let's take our marching orders, not from Donald Trump or, or Mr. Biden, but from Jesus Christ. Okay, regardless of who's in power. But all of these decisions, and they let this go. We never addressed it until they came right to the streets of Kabul, and then we let them even take that. Why? People are asking me, I don't understand. Why? It's purposeful. We are letting this happen. What other explanation do you have? Why would we let that happen? And why would we let our own people be stuffed behind? Here's how Marxism works. You get to a country, one of the things you do is you infiltrate the universities. We have now 200 universities that have classes in Marxism. Sometimes they tell you that's what it is blatantly and Marxism's good, they say. Sometimes they're giving you the concepts but you don't really know what's going on. 200 of our universities are now have classes in Marxism, teaching our kids to be unhappy with this country. Uh, they have now raised up all kinds of groups that make uh, people who kind of feel a little marginalized, who doesn't feel marginalized sometimes, unless you're born with a silver spoon in your mouth. I could tell you all kinds of prejudicial things against me. Um, that I've had in my life. Oh, you say, well, gee, that's, well, and it may be not as bad as our, our black brothers and sisters and people from other countries, but I know what that's like to be excluded and pushed aside and made fun of and bullied. I know what that's like. It's a good thing I got big and strong and then they, some of them stopped. <laughs> they don't want to deal with me anymore, you know, but, um, and that's gone throughout my whole life. Uh, and you can get anybody, almost anybody, cranked up. Oh, you're a woman. You're not treated right. And on some cases, you're not. And that needs to be corrected. If, oh, you're black. You're, you know, you're white supremacy and all this stuff. And there is white supremacy, and we need to do better with that. Absolutely, I agree, one hundred percent. And we have made progress. I have watched this. I'm seventy-two years old. I have not just come to this country two years ago. I have watched this my whole life. We have made, I could tell you stories of things I experienced when I was a kid that made me sick about racial prejudice. And I'm still sure some of that stuff still happens, but it's a lot less. We need to improve. Don't misunderstand what I'm saying. Any kind of prejudice is unacceptable. As a Christian, it's unacceptable. We don't want it. Okay. So, but we, we get people mad. You have been discriminated against. You have been put down. This country is a racist country. That's baloney. 1619 is this thing that they're trying to teach. That's when the country formed. No, it's not. Started in 1776 and during the Revolutionary War and beyond when we formed our constitution. Many of the Northern states were not for slavery. We inherited that from England, thank you very much. And we have worked hard to, to rectify that. And we went back and forth for many decades until we had a civil war in which hundreds of thousands of soldiers, many from the North died. What were they fighting for? Well, several things. 
But the most important thing was they were trying to get freedom for a person of color. How come we never hear about that? How come we don't hear about the Emancipation Proclamation of Abraham Lincoln? It was the Republican Party, by the way, that freed the slaves. The Democrats wanted slavery. Now, I know things have changed, but I mean, if you want to make these comments, you could teach that and let's be mad at the Democrats. Republicans and Democrats are, are both far from what we, we would like. I'm disgusted with both parties, to be honest with you, and all this politicking. But we teach, we're teaching now through critical race theory in schools. So it was in the colleges, now it's coming down into our high schools and even our grade school kids are being taught this. This is a Marxist thing. Karl Marx had the proletariat, which were the poor and the working class and the bourgeoisie, who were the rich people and the factory owners. And, and he said, there should be a class war. We need to rise up and take these fat cats out of their positions and take their stuff. And let's develop a utopia where everybody's equal. The problem was he told them how to go about upsetting the society with one crisis after another, just like we're seeing now in our country, one crisis after another. And if you have to flatten, you, you have to flatten the present government. You have to destroy the present way things are done in the country. Then the government sweeps in and says, oh, we can fix this. When they have the majority of people on the dole, uh, which is what we're working towards right now. This is what happens. And Marx told people how to revolt and how the, the proletariat needs to rise up against the bourgeoisie and flip the thing around. And they were successful in the Soviet Union and in China and in Cuba and in Venezuela and other places that has now thrown it out. Um, they managed to get the people up in arms against the present government and to overthrow it. The only problem is Marx didn't tell them how to get this utopia once the ruling uh, class was knocked out of position and the, the everyday guy was now in control. We wound up with a couple of very astute people like Lenin and, and Stalin. You ever hear those guys? And uh, Mao Zedong and people like and tens of millions of people disappeared. You know what that means? They were killed. First, you're, you're shut up. They take your, free, your right of free speech away, which is happening in our country right now. Um, they take that away. They rewrite history. Oh, now it's a racist country or whatever. Uh, they take that away. They take your freedoms away, little by little. You don't even know it. And they throw the statues down and all of that. We're rejecting past history because it's not really written the right way. Now we're telling you what really happened. It's a racist nation. It's an ugly nation. You know, I hate America is what a lot of our kids are being taught. We need to be vigilant about that. Anybody that has kids in school, you better find out what they're teaching. Uh, that some of that has now happened because of the pandemic. The kids were home and the parents started looking, what is this you're, you're learning? What is this? And some of the parents are now pushing back in some of these school districts. Um, Black Lives Matters. It, they go on their website. They are blatantly Marxist. They are against the nuclear family, mom, dad, and kids. They're against that. They want to overthrow this country. This is not really about racism. They are just seizing upon something um, and causing another, to cause another crisis, we have, um, unfortunately, the, the, the major uh, networks, news networks don't cover what's going on in our cities with all the destruction and the upheaval and um, this business of defund the police and everything, which is one of the stupidest things. Um, to go on. As a former police chaplain, I see what our police do. 75% of the stuff police do is to help people when they're in trouble. And you're going to defund them and 
cut down on the number of because a couple of bad apples. The thing with Mr. Floyd is horrible. That should never have happened. And that man is going to be in prison, well, maybe not long enough. That, that caused that. That police officer was way out of line. But just because a few officers have done the wrong thing, we throw the whole batch out the window? No, 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 no. We need to get a balance here on this, folks. Um, and I'm finding out that my time has run away. Um, so what I'm saying here is we are, our free speech is being taken away. Twitter and um, Facebook and several of these others are, are now clamping down on uh, strong Christian groups and people who are saying things about COVID, who are saying things that have scientific basis and they're being shut down. Uh, our own former president has been shut down. He's got a lawsuit going about it now. Since when is our free speech taken away? And it would be one thing if he was telling us to, to start an anarchy or something. That's not what, what he did. And we shut even the president of the United States down. What is going on here? Now, you're shouted down on some college campuses. You are silenced if you don't have the right, if you're not on the right side, if you're not telling uh, their truth. Uh, we are losing it. And we have many, many of these other groups um, that are causing havoc in our society are going to go from one crisis to the next. And the idea we've gone from 20, 21 million or trillion dollars deficit, which is ridiculous, to 28 trillion in like seven months with this new regime. And they're going to keep spending. If they can get all these other things passed, they will destroy the economy. Our dollar is already sinking. Uh, we are in, we're in trouble. And the idea is to destroy this, this system of government. Now, I think a lot of the, these folks, they don't realize what they're doing. They think they're, they're doing the right thing. I do not believe that. I believe that they are doing the wrong thing. But there are some that are, that are Marxist. They know what they're doing. They're well-organized. They're teaching all this junk in our schools. They've taken over most of the media. They have shut down those who have a different point of view. Um, trying to make people upset with one another. This, this country is so divided. Gosh, tw uh, two, 20 years ago, we were, we were re re reunited by a disaster. That's what it took. I don't know if we even have the will to fight if, if uh, we had to. Would we go to, to bat to help Ukraine if Russia attacks? Are we going to have the will to, to do what we can to help um, Taiwan if China, who's rattling its sword? Seems like we're feckless. We have, we have the greatest army, the greatest military in the world. And I hate it that we have to have that. Why can't we just love each other? But they're shackled. They, they, they can't do anything. So we need to pray for good government. I don't know what the answer is. Right now, the one party has everything locked up. Uh, and they're just pushing this stuff down our throats and we can't stop it. Um, we can't impeach anybody or do anything like that because we don't have the, the there's, not, there's no vote. There's not a number of votes to do that. Um, what has been done is unconscionable. It is very evil to the core. I'm sorry to say that. Um, and God help us. Oh, I'm so sorry. I don't want to talk like this. <sighs> Hopefully I won't have to go back and visit this anytime soon. Take it for what it is. Um, there's a book called um, American Marxism. You might want to check that out if you're uh, intellectually minded. It's a hard read, but I, I can only read a couple of pages at a time because it, it just, I said, oh my God, I see what you're saying. You're right. I, he gives example, example after example. 
and he quotes these people who are teaching these things. This is not his opinion. He is telling you what these people have written and said. They speak for themselves and they are very obviously wanting to overthrow this country. Please don't say, oh, come on. You know, we've been through tough times before. Yeah, I have friends that I've made in from Venezuela. Two friend, new friends through Elba from Cuba. And they say, we saw what happened when they took over. We saw the, the process. It took a long time, but they took it over and they've run those countries into the ground. We have people from China now and, and these other countries who say they are even using some of the same uh, terms. Here in America, they're using communist China. So I hope we wake up. And I don't want to talk like this anymore if I can. I'm hoping that there'll be a great backlash and we will re start reclaiming our, our freedoms again. Um, there's so much more. And I'm so, I'm already run out of time. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you and praise you. Uh, at least I've put out there um, something that uh, will make people think. Yes, we should be uh, concerned about the economy because our country could collapse if we keep spending like this. Yes, we should be mindful of terrorism and people come in here and open borders and cities that are on fire. And uh, there's just one crisis after another. But all of these are just outward signs of uh, what, what the ultimate thing in, in the shadows, and not so much anymore, is happening. So we ask, Lord, that we have good government, that you would do whatever you need to do to, to inform us, to, to vote in a way that will give us good government. Uh, help us, God, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. I want to say something else. I'm sorry I'm going to run way over here. Take me just another minute. God gave me another illustration. He says, pretend that you are a physician, medical, a doctor, and you see this really healthy, powerful man who's got a little bit of a medical problem. And you know this man for years, and the years go by, and you're watching this guy. He lifts weights, and he does all this stuff, and he's trying to stay in shape. But there's something wrong, and he seems to be deteriorating. And you just can't put your finger on it. You've never, you've seen these symptoms, but you just, it doesn't add up. What, what kind of a disease or what is it that this guy has? Then one day you find out it's a special kind of cancer. And he's stage three already. And he may not make it. That's America, God said to me. You've been watching, I've been collecting articles for years. For 48 years, I read an article about something, about our culture, or something that, if, you know, the Christian faith, or all kinds of, I have a huge file, it's actually housed in the, in the Methodist Church in Kenilworth right now, it's so big, um, on all kinds of subjects, and including social issues, if you want to call it, the, they're really moral issues, um, and I've watched this thing. I've watched our country unraveling as we continue to accept things that are not acceptable, things that are not biblical, things we're told to stay away from and not do. I've been watching this. All these symptoms, and I thought, oh, it's just conservatives going too far, liberals going too far, and push back and forth, and, you know, it'll all even out. And, but the symptoms have been getting worse, and I realize now that the patient, which is the United States of America, is very sick. And Dr. Dr. Don, who am I? But my God says, this country is in trouble. Don't think, just because we're high and mighty and we're the greatest country in the face of the earth, I'm not so sure about that anymore, the way we're going. Don't think that we can't go crashing down as well. Many great empires have gone before us that were unbeatable. The Roman Empire, the Babylonians, 
the Assyrians and all, where are they today? They came crashing down and the same can happen to us. Oh, I wish I could go on. God bless you. Thank you for listening to me go on and on here. Um, I don't, I'm not going to say, I, I, I hope that you can come back and say you're all wrong because I'm not. This is one time I'm going to be dogmatic. I know what I'm talking about. This is what God has shown me very clearly. Take heed, my friend. Pray and do what you can or we're going to lose it. All right. May God bless you. Take heed. Fear not, because God is greater. And if we rest in him and be empowered by him, one thing communism cannot coexist with is when the church is really the church. Okay? They're afraid of the church when it's really the church. All right. Enough said. Blessings.